In an ever more digital world, a relatively new breed of criminals exist. Hackers and cyber criminals. This is something North Korea has spent lots of work on, as their previous leader, Kim Jong-il, said that all wars in the future years will be computer wars. North Korea's hackers made headlines in 2014 when they knocked down Sony Pictures' computer systems and erased their data. North Korea has for a long time been considered a mid-level security threat, but in recent times it has become one of the world's most sophisticated and dangerous hacking machines. The North Korean hackers often target banks and point-of-sale systems, like a credit card checkout or stock transfers, but they also use ransomware, and they were responsible for the Adobe Flash hack which gave them the ability to steal sensitive information from South Korean networks. These days, the North Korean hackers surprise researchers because of their originality and techniques they use for hacking. North Korea is cultivating elite hackers almost the same way other countries train Olympic athletes. Claims from defectors and South Korean cyber and intelligence experts say that promising students are identified as young as 11 years old, get funneled into special schools where they are taught how to hack and develop computer viruses. After being recruited as a trainee for North Korea Cyber Army, they get roomy Pyongyang apartments and an exemption from mandatory military service. One defector who received the trainee training said that there's an intense preparation for an annual hackathon competition in Pyongyang. They team up learning to solve puzzles and hacking problems under severe time pressure. He recalls training for the hackathon for six months, day and night, to beat the competition. Top performers from the hackathon get jobs foraging for money via websites or overseas banks or target intelligence networks in other countries. The North Korean hackers are so proficient that during a hackathon in 2015, North Korean teams ranked first, second and third out of more than 7,600 teams worldwide. North Korea's cyber army has about 7,000 hackers divided into three teams. The A team, they focus on foreign entities and is responsible for the WannaCry and the Sony attacks. The B team is mostly focused on the South Korean military and infrastructure secrets, but they've been focusing more on intelligence in other places in recent years. And lastly, the C team. They do lower skilled hacking, such as targeted email attacks. The way the North Koreans rob the banks is by duping the computers into authorizing fraudulent transactions. This is done by hacking into the core system in international business called Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, or SWIFT for short. The SWIFT system has been around since the 1970s, and to this day, 11,000 financial institutions in over 200 countries use this to process tens of millions of transactions every day. The daily transfers total trillions of dollars, even more than the annual gross domestic product of some countries. The biggest bank robbery ever performed was by North Korean hackers. It worked by hacking the central bank of Bangladesh. They sent out around 30 payments. The requests were all sent over the SWIFT system. The total sum almost reached $1 billion. The money was moved to accounts in Sri Lanka and the Philippines. During the hack, a printer in the central bank of Bangladesh stopped working. This printer's only and most important work was to automatically print physical records of the bank's SWIFT transactions. The following morning, the employees came back to work. They saw that the printer hadn't printed anything. They tried to print it all out manually, but they couldn't. The computer would print out an error message. This caused a panic as the employees couldn't see any transactions taking place at their own bank. The hackers knew that the best way to rob a bank is not to directly hack the SWIFT system, but to hack the machines that were connected to it. They targeted their efforts to hacking the bank's networks and users, and they gained access after months of preparations. When the hackers gained access to the bank's SWIFT account, they initiated transactions just like any other authorized user. 
They even manipulated transaction logs, which made it harder to figure out where the bank's money was going. This gave the North Koreans some extra time to not get detected. In the end, the North Korean hackers came out with 81 million dollars as the Federal Reserve acted quickly on 30 out of the 35 fraudulent transfers. To this day, none has been arrested for this bank robbery, and the FBI and other cybersecurity agencies claim that this was done by the A group of North Korea's cyber army. Now, when North Korea is on the rise in cybercrime, staying protected is utmost important. Which brings us to today's question. Have you ever been hacked? Let us know in the comments!